this. So I've been partying a lot more recently and then since I haven't really been having like any audio since I don't really talk to anyone and when I'm pugging unless they would actually want me to I don't really have any audio for the Mythic Plus runs and just adding some music to it like a 20 plus minutes long clip would be I don't know, it feels kind of boring and then interesting so I figured I would just use some uh, commentary over the videos instead and where I can actually go through like my thought process and like my strategies when it comes to certain dungeons and like when I switch gear and what gear I might be using and when I use certain abilities and maybe like when I use uh, Eagle for example um, and things like that. And this is probably mostly things that a seasoned veteran would be aware of but there might even be like a thing or two that you might not know about that you maybe <laughs> would expect to know. Uh, so I'll kind of just be like going through this video. And when it comes to like pulls like the whelps, like the mana worms, like you kind of want, <laughs> like most people maybe are very, feel very tempted to use uh, Eagle and then like a triple butchery or something. Um, and if you're doing like lower keys, then like with random people, then I would completely understand that because uh, you probably have people like oh my god survival hunter I've never seen it before I'm pretty sure it's shit or something like I don't know usually people don't see it like it's shit anymore and they're just kind of surprised because they never see it um, so if you want to just like pad the numbers a bit then like sure but as you can see, like the worms, I mean the mana worms die like in two seconds uh, with just butchery alone. So it's just a bit better to save it for like the bigger packs. And you can also see this uh, pretty neat skip that I learned actually from Huggin. Um, I knew it in this run, um, but I still stealth because like, I'm not really going to use it on anything else. So I might as well use it here. Uh, and on the, this first boss you can like use Freezing Trap on the ads um, to proc Zephyrs. Alternatively you could like just uh, uh, keep it up and you can cleave off of it. It doesn't really add anything for survival. Um, you can like use your interrupt to proc Zephyrs as well though. Um, or I guess you can freezing trap the ad even if other people are attacking it and breaking the CC. Um, but if you have like a lock that I do in the party then he's not going to be too happy about that. Um, so I kind of just leave it alone. Like I can use like a time racial proc Zephyrs. But other than that... As long as you just have one add up and you make sure that it doesn't get any cast off, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, it's more that when you have like two adds, it becomes more problematic. You can also see that I'm using Turtle on some of his casts. It's not because that I don't want to jump or anything like that. Um, it's just that I'm not going to use Turtle on anything else the next two minutes or so. Um, so I might as well use it for like a split second and then immediately uh, removing it so I can save some of my healers time to just DPS the boss more. And you should also like maybe use some things like acceleration to top yourself off but it doesn't really matter too much and I can also kind of go into my gearing thoughts here like on most bosses I go surface because it seems higher for me um, it just offers me more DPS and also Pridus is just really good in general because it makes you more tanky and survival you don't really have anything besides Turtle, which has a pretty lengthy cooldown and kind of sucks because you can't really DPS during it outside of throwing caltrops and explosive trap. 
but it's a pr it's pretty nice as well. So it's, it's mostly an immunity, but it's like so buggy sometimes because you might cast it and things still go through it. Like for example, you have a, a traveling projectile going towards you, and you turtle, and it still go through and kills you. But if you use it a bit earlier, then it won't go through. So I don't know what's going on with that. Um, but right after this boss, like a lot of the times, I will equip like the the butchery chest and stack it up on the construct before going into this Inquisitor impact. Um, and like sometimes I don't because I want to have Cephas on like every ad pack, which just it's just that useful. And since I know um, we're gonna do like the in patrol pretty shortly after this, I'm using Call of the Wild so I can hopefully make sure that it's gonna be off cooldown by then. But it's a bit of a gamble because you don't really know how much time um, you're gonna be using like in between. Here like we died, so um, you're going a bit slower than you normally would. So if you just go like, straight from this pack to the these two and then right into the imps then you're probably not gonna have it up but because we died like it makes us have a bit more extra but here like our tank pulls them together with the imps that you maybe normally wouldn't so the time evens out like it's pretty simple and then at least barely gets eagle up uh, by the end of this pack so it was bit of a poor decision but still like with which we still do pretty respectable AOE damage and then I can have it up for like the next pull at least and unless you're fighting something like the Inquisitor packs and shit I generally never really have Zephyrus equipped since you can't proc it off of anything and something you should like um, maybe look into here is actually using Hellbrand because it's really useful since you're going to be fighting like these uh, solo mobs that have like a decent amount of HP if you're not going to die uh, too quickly and, like the combinations I would go with that is usually like Hellbrine and Call of the Wild um, if you have Eagle Up if you don't then you use like a different legendary you can use the like the legendary boots or something um, or just use your uh, the legendary that offers you the most DPS but just keep in mind that Call of the Wild is not going to offer you much DPS if you have Eagle um, on cooldown. Gorshalak's pretty yeah, good. Like if you if you put on Gorshalak for most of the AOE packs and you look at the damage it does overall, it's pretty okay. Um, but the problem with Gorshalak is that you don't really know when you're going to get the damage. Sometimes you can kind of predict it, and especially if you attack some packs that aren't really too relevant or dangerous then you can kind of like stomp it even like if you go up to 14 stacks then you can like just stop um, attacking the mob and just uh, throw kill traps and shit at it and then move on to the next pack and that can be like, really useful when it comes to dealing with uh, these patrols on like 45 keys and stuff but since it's a tyrannical key, it's not really that big of a problem. And like the downfall with pugs is that you can't really communicate too much with each other. Um, one thing, something that I really like is being able to communicate with my tank and being aware of exactly what pulls uh, is gonna do, so I can like strategize around that and plan what item setups I'm gonna be using and when I'm gonna use like uh, aspect of the eagle. And stuff like that but it's 
it's a pretty smooth run like overall uh, we had pretty ambitious pulls but we still managed to go through it Something that maybe not everyone knows is that you can cancel like a lot of channeling spells. Like I think every channel spell in the game by using Fain Death. Um, and sadly, Turtle doesn't cancel this beam thingy, but at least he doesn't. Uh, it makes it not apply his debuff at least, so I don't uh, lose any damage apart from the duration I have to keep Turtle up. I know you can also kind of line of sight the beam, but it's. I don't know, like you have a split second when he targets you and then he has like this short cast time. I think if you line of sight it during the cast then it won't go off, but if it goes off then even if you run around corners and shit then he will still be able to channel. Like another thing, another uh, legendary that wouldn't be that bad in Mythic Plus either would be Kelly as Burning Wish. I personally I don't think I've ever used it apart from like a, quite a long time ago when I didn't really have better choices. But I believe it can be pretty good like in cases like this, especially if you don't have too good shrink. Like obviously if you have a pretty high eye level Pantheon trinket plus a good eye level on a pair of skirt wings, then you're gonna be pretty good to go and you don't really need to equip uh, killed agents for that but it might still be like a boost um, if you just go like these uh, small pulls and you're not planning on using aspect uh, during the pull like if it's on cooldown or if you really need it for like an upcoming pack then you might as well uh, switch out call of the wild to using something that gives you more uh, stats are just some useful effect. Now, I think Quarter Stars is probably one of the best dungeons for survival because most of the bosses don't really have they don't have any one shot mechanics, right? Unless you stand in the fucking stun shit on the first boss, for example. Uh, but it's like unavoidable damage, basically. Um, like you're gonna be pretty, uh, gonna be pretty good off on just uh, with what you offer. Survival doesn't do bad single target by any means, and it's not that cooldown reliant either. Um, so you're gonna do pretty good damage on like every single pull, and that's also something you can do in Court of Stars. It kind of depends on the fixes, of course, but in an ideal world you can do pretty frequent somewhat boot peoples like I mainly think about the patrols and like the mana worms although those aren't really the biggest problems and then you have like the second boss where you can EU a lot the second boss I think is really nice for survival So what I do on the second boss here uh, is that I always use Butcher's Bone Apron because you can always just stack up uh, your 
character stacks like before she spawns themes we actually need it and I try to and of course I'm running Sephis as well and I'm kind of throwing Call of the Wild aside because I don't really see too much use in it like it might give you one more use out of Eagle but I just think that the Sephis effect is just way too good Something you can also consider here would be the boots, maybe, uh, since the focus bug is in play with them, and you get like more focus than you probably should. So it kind of depends, but hopefully your timings of your ability uses align with when the ad spawns, and you're always going to have at least like two stacks of which are available for them, and. Like if the stars align, then you'll have Fury of the Eagle at six stacks as well, um, which do does quite a bit of damage. I usually hold off uh, Eagle quite a lot here because um, one of the biggest mistakes you can do on this boss is for every DPS to pop their cooldowns on the first set of ads, and then you just don't have anything for the next ones, and then maybe you have to spend all of your like stuns and shit um, just to not die to them and then you just don't have anything for the like the next set of ads and you just get fucked and Gorshalax is pretty good on the second boss but it's still so much RNG like I've had it do like nothing I've had it hit the boss twice but I've also had it do amazing things so it's just so RNG when it comes to that trinket and sometimes those are risks you, you'll be willing to take, but, so, but most of the time it isn't. Especially if you rely on you dishing out the damage, then it's just basically a bad statistic. It's just a bad... Like, it just gives you a bit of haste. That's like the only thing it does. But like I said, that's survival strength in that you do your damage uh, without really relying on any uh, CDs, you only have like one, and while it's pretty damn good, it's not like game breaking or anything. Crusade would be for Paladins, for example, or maybe Meta for Demon Hunters, although I'm not too sure when it comes to them. I'm not sure if most people know about this, but on this last boss, if you stand close to uh, the boss or any of these illusions when he does his channel, you take about double the damage. If you just stand outside the kind of swirly circles, you'll be able to see it like quite clear visually. And if you just stand close to too many, then you're just gonna take so much damage. And since Revival has like a bit of increased range, you should never really be in too much trouble when it comes to that. Even though you don't really have much of anything to prevent the damage aside from Turtle every now and then. Like you're most likely not gonna have more than one use of Turtle because you don't wanna use it early because the damage is not dangerous at that point. And uh, by the time it's pretty late into the fight, uh, the boss shouldn't live for too much longer. And most of the time you can kind of just stand on the edge and still be able to DPS. Uh, but 
if it comes down to it, then it's obviously much better if you just leave melee range for a few seconds while he does his channel to make sure that you take a uh, minimal damage. Here you can see my teammates weren't uh, <laughs> probably weren't aware of this thing that I just went through, uh, and they just take so much damage, and it's like way too hard for the healer to go through. Like at the end, if you have a bunch of stacked illusions and you stand close to them, then they're just gonna die. And uh, frankly, the healer wasn't too aware either. You can see that, even though I have less survivability than all of these people, like I still don't die, um, because I'm aware of this. And if you can, you should definitely run Pridus on this boss, because like I said, you don't have any defensives or anything. And for me, it's actually like a DPS increase. But when you do use Turtle, uh, make sure to clear some of these uh, like tornadoes that stun people, uh, because you have like nothing better to do during this time anyway. So you might as well help out your group. Having an easier time moving around and for the tank to position this boss. This boss isn't too dangerous for like a lot of people. Uh, like rogues shine here so much because fucking faint is just so strong. But even if you do have like a lot of deaths, I think it might even be soloable for like the UKs. Uh, unless it's just too high of a level. But the boss just does insane amounts of damage. But all, all in all, it was a fairly smooth run. And I just really like doing quarter stars, so I spent a lot of time here. And you're always. Like, if you do it right, then you're pretty much always gonna perform pretty solidly in survival here. There might be a few more dungeons as well that I quite like playing as survival, which. I'll hopefully find some footage for, and maybe do some more commentary really again, um, or I would just do it uh, with the people I usually do the class with, or possibly in a pod group. Uh, but I preferably just do some. <laughs> I just prefer having some voice communication going, so you can actually communicate. It's just so much harder uh, when you do it without too much communication. Well, this has been the first video I've actually done like some commentary instead of just like talking with the people I play. So just let me know uh, your thoughts on it and maybe something I can do better. And I'll hope for, I'll hopefully do a better job in the future. <laughs>